Hey guys, thanks for checking out the channel. Thanks for checking out the video. My name is Hunter, if you couldn't tell by the YouTube channel name. Um, today, we're gonna be doing a hopefully quick video. I think I say that sort of every video. I talk a lot, these aren't quick. But I'm gonna be doing a video talking about the autofocus settings I use with a Nikon Z5. Um, if you just watched or go through my channel, I just made kind of an overall impressions, my review of the Z5 after a year's worth of use. Um, as a wedding photographer and videographer. Um, I, I see a lot of people, um, Facebook's the primary, uh, I guess, camera forum that I'm a part of, uh, some of the Facebook Z groups, which I'll be posting this to. Um, a lot of people complain about the autofocus systems of the Z cameras. A lot of people whine about it. They say, um, you know, just all the things that people say. I can tell you after um, doing this for around 10 weddings this year um, and using the Z5 as a primary camera for pretty much everything except for portraits, um, I love the autofocus system. I think the autofocus system is the best system that I've used in a camera. Um, I, it just it works fantastically for me and it it I don't like seeing other people struggling with theirs or unhappy with theirs because I'm so happy with the purchase I made with mine. So I'm gonna take some time today, um, just do a video to show you how I set up my autofocus, how it works well for me, some considerations that I think if you, you take some of these and work them in with your camera, um, that hopefully it'll work a little bit better for you. So we're gonna jump in and take a look at this. So we've got our Z5 set up right here. I'm gonna try and hold it as still as possible um, so that we can really see what I've got going on here. We're gonna make this screen a little brighter. So hopefully you can see my subject matter here. So I've got, you've got your function buttons on the front. I'm gonna be hitting those um, and you can see my settings change up here. Um, so you can see up at the top that my autofocus settings will highlight. I think you can see that. So um, autofocus continuous and wide S is what I've got it on right now. So your back will scroll through manual focus, autofocus single, autofocus continuous. Um, those are the options I've got for photo mode. We switch to video mode. I've got the exact same function, but we've got manual focus, single, continuous, and the autofocus flexible. That way it'll hold focus until it senses your subject move. And we'll pull into there. So I'm gonna primarily be working in the video mode because obviously we want video. I'm gonna take video of what we're doing in this. So the settings I use for photo and video are pretty much the same. Um, it's it's going to depend. So your autofocus um, S, C, and F is going to depend on what you're taking pictures of um, or video of. Right now we're obviously doing still life, so I would use an autofocus S. Um, I think one of the things I see people complain about the most is there um, so in video we only have single point um, if we go back to photo we have not in manual focus but in we have this pinpoint autofocus and you see that little tiny dot I got scrolling across the screen I like the idea of a pinpoint autofocus to where you can really hone in on a certain thing individually. Um, but what you're doing is you're taking a, a portion of an autofocus point. Um, you're not even giving the camera a whole autofocus point to try to focus off of. And so like here, it's gonna struggle a little bit. We're gonna move it over to the Nikon logo. We've got some contrast, got some better light in on there. And there it's locked on. Um, even though it's giving me a low, well, maybe it hasn't. I don't, we might be too close to. I'm gonna move this back a little bit, move our light source over here. Um, so there it's locked on. Maybe, and it's a possibility I was too close, but we're gonna move focus point over here to the black area. Man, it's still able to lock on. Um, this is under kind of ideal conditions. We got plenty of light in this room. Um, so we're still able to lock on there. I, for, when I'm doing portrait work or if I'm, you know, especially weddings, um, events, 
things like that, I'm not going to use that pinpoint autofocus. I'm going to give the camera as much ability to get a focus as I want. So I want to set this up a little bit. Uh, last wedding I did, um, in between recording the review video and editing it, um, I recorded some video at a wedding ceremony. Uh, this is just an iPhone recording of the back of my screen while I'm taking pictures. Uh, you can see I'm at 12,000 ISO. I am my f4 24 to 120 lens for a lot of these i will switch to a 35 prime um, for one just to show you the difference but uh, just as i talk about the different focus points i will put in video from using each one of those focus points in a very low light setting um, and you can kind of come to your own conclusions after seeing the real world use as opposed to just um, this lens that i'm setting on the table and doing different things with uh, but for the most part, it's pretty usable, but it, you definitely see as I go through the different points how much better the camera focuses on each point. If I want something detailed, if I'm doing like a ring shot, I'll go to the single point and you see how much bigger that's actually using a full focus point and it locks on a lot quicker. Even with this low light I've got in here, even doing just like the darker side, the black side of that lens, it focuses a fair amount quicker. Um, we'll zoom way in here. So I can still get pretty detailed with this. So let's see what happens when we take away our little light here. We've just got a, a window over here that's our side light. You know, this isn't super dark. Um, my settings are weird. I'm at F10, 800. Um, but we're still getting pretty good autofocus um, ability and lock on and I, I get pretty good results with that single point there And so here we are back at the reception with a single point autofocus. You can see me moving around at different people's faces um, I have to go back and look at the pictures But for the most part it looks like it's locking on like it's doing what it's supposed to it struggles here with this bridesmaid as She turns around um, it struggles pretty bad right here between these two faces. I have somebody walk in front of me so even there, as you saw it struggle um, for just a little bit, that's that's more than I want it to struggle as a wedding photographer. You know, you're trying to capture these these moments, and whatever moment I was trying to get has already passed. I'm um, just taking the half second there to get it to focus, but it did lock onto the bride's face. Um, eventually, you know, with that single point there, um, you know, as dark as it is, uh, I think in the next video I'll show you the actual setup of the room where there's, there's not much light here, but you just really have to work on finding that contrast to give the autofocus point a contrast to focus on. Uh, you just have to work at that a little bit harder when you're using the single point method. Um, as we go, uh, single point's definitely not what I shoot in for receptions, um, but as I go through the video I'll show you kind of more what I do use. For the most part, um, I said in my other video, I haven't done a lot of portrait work with this camera. I don't have portrait lenses for this camera. Um, my portrait lenses are the older screw type autofocus Nikon lenses. Um, this obviously we do have manual focus um, to where we've got, we'll zoom in here, oops. So we'll zoom in here. You can see the focus peaking, um, that blue that shows up as I rack focus across this. Um, so if you want to do manual focus, you can do that. Now, if I set my focus point, and as I roll through, so that focus point will turn green. If you're used to older um, DSLRs, you'll notice you've got your arrows and your dot down here at the bottom. Um, those, you know, in the old DSLRs, those will tell you which way you need to move your focus ring to get in focus. But then, so you've got your focus peaking, you've got your confirmation with the focus point lighting up green, and then you've got your dot down here in the corner. So they give you lots of tools to use manual focus with if you want to use manual focus. Um, I just, I've got cameras that work well with my screw type autofocus lenses. I'm going to keep using those until I'm able to get um, good, uh, probably a 35 and an 85 prime is what I'm looking at buying um, next budget year for this camera, for the Z series specifically. I don't like using autofocus or auto area autofocus. Um, I don't like it picking the area for me. I've, I'm a point guy. I want to pick a point. And the great thing about mirrorless is I can pick points all over the stinking place. Um, but I want to pick a point and tell that camera where I want to focus. So what I end up using a lot more of is 
these wide S and wide L's. So if that's a single point, your wide S probably has four autofocus points that it's working off of. Um, you're gonna get dang near instant results. So we're back to the reception. Um, this is where I'm using that wide S focal point. And you can see for kind of these medium wide shots, um, I'm still focusing on a person's face. A person's face fits about inside that box. But as I go around, you can see how the camera snaps to focus pretty quick. Um, you know, it locks on focus. I can tell you I have a very high hit rate, both from looking at these um, in camera as I was taking them and looking at them afterwards. Um, we have very high hit rate, something I was um, definitely happy with how the camera was performing in this really, really low light situation. But for for working with people, um, again, I'm primarily talking to weddings, um, events, you know, dances. When we're shooting and when this is in portrait mode, when this camera's turned, that box is great for if you want to get a wide shot of a person in a dance, you put that box over the person, get a wide shot with the crowd in the background, it will lock onto those people. Um, you can put a head in that wider box um, and it will lock onto that head. I'm not, you know, for events, I'm not looking for a critical, like getting that eye in focus, autofocus. That's more portrait work. So here's the actual shot of what the uh, reception lighting looks like. We've got a couple of rope lights um, hung up and then a little tiny chandelier in the middle. Not a lot for putting out actual light here. It's very low lighting. So I'm gonna show a couple of clips where I have used a 1.8 lens. This is actually that 35 DX lens that I've been using for most of the video uh, as a subject. So it does crop in, you can see the DX crop at the top. Um, but it gives you a little bit more of an idea of what this is going to do with a faster lens. And obviously it does do better. Here we're using um, actually pinpoint and where I'm putting that pinpoint on people's faces. You know, I'm, I'm back a ways. I'm kind of standing towards the edge, um, but still throwing it around. And it, it obviously does better than the F4 lenses, which this is really the first time I had tried um, to use that lens much for picture work. I'd used it for video some, and this is the first time I tried it in this low of lighting. Um, obviously 1.8s are going to do better. And you can see that the primes, they just work better. Um, and they I think they're going to give you better looking results. A lot of times I just like the flexibility of the zooms. Um, I've gotten used to that. But so we switch back here to that wide S point. Um, and obviously I could get a little bit closer. This is a pretty big area we're taking pictures of, but it just works a lot quicker. Um, it's a pretty drastic change to go from the pinpoint in the first video to the wide S in the second video. Uh, but it, I mean, it shows you even with the right equipment. Um, if you're working in just terrible lighting conditions or working in something where your camera is struggling, you know, give your camera some help, throw it over to that wider setting so that it has more information to get that focus off of. And it's gonna perform well. That's what I'm trying to show through these, through these uh, examples is that this camera performs really well. Um, it's harder for me to capture uh, the DSLRs as I'm you know, taking pictures in the same area, but I, I didn't use my DSLR in this reception much at all. Um, and granted, I had a screw type AF lens that I was trying to use it with, the longer lens, uh, but it was, it was not happy. It did not enjoy taking pictures in this dark area, whereas that mirrorless C5, it just did what it was supposed to. It focused well. I had, like I've said, a, a high percentage of hits on it, and it, it performed very, very well, and I was very happy with it. There's other people that have done reviews on the IAF. I haven't dealt with it a lot because I'm using it I'm using it like this. So some of this comes back, comes from when I was using DSLRs primarily. I'm gonna get my 610 in here. So with the DSLRs, you can see on that back screen, it's got a center point and then a group of autofocus points. So it's gonna primarily look at that center point, but then use the group of autofocus points to help you out. And um, we can change how many points so we have a single point, we've got a group of nine here, or three by three nine, or a bigger point that I can, I can then move that group of points around the screen and get to what I want to focus on. That's the autofocus mode that I use primarily with my DSLRs. That's what I use primarily with portrait work. I, my D610 is probably still, between it and my 700 are still my main portrait cameras. Um, so that's kind of where I'm coming from as far as 
um, why I went with that type of an autofocus setting when I moved to the mirrorless, um, because that's what I've been using. Now, I, am I more interested in IAF as I get, you know, an 85-1.8 and I'm doing closer tight up headshots? Yeah. And maybe I'll come back and do like an update, you know, once I've gotten into that. But um, I, a lot of people talk about, well, you've got to have the Z mount lenses and you've got to have open apertures and it's got to, you know, it, this camera needs a lot of light. Uh, no, it doesn't. Um, I will switch over to video here and we'll take a video. So I, this is an F4 constant lens. I'm going to crank it down to F9. Um, we'll boost the ISO up so we've got a decent exposure. We're going to zoom out. To, so we're at 50. F9, I'm gonna hit record. I'm actually gonna change this. Well, we'll do single point for right now. Except I'm not on autofocus continuous. I gotta tell it I wanna continuously focus. Well, we're outside of the focal range, but I'm gonna move it back. You can barely, so even, even these G lenses, um, they make a little bit of noise, oops. Even these G lenses make a little bit of noise when they focus, but they don't make a whole lot of noise. I don't know if you can hear that or not. You might be able to hear it when I put the actual footage in. So if I move this back, I might need to move my point up, but you can also do, okay. So that's, we're within our minimum focal distance, focusing distance now. It won't focus any closer than that, but as I move this back and forth, it's focusing and we're on an AFF. I'm not touching the camera, I'm not doing anything. So this shows, you know, if you were to use this um, in video mode on a gimbal, if you're doing gimbal work, um, it will it will autofocus along with things. It'll, it'll move along with everything. Um, if I change focus point to a wide, then I can touch the screen. Um, we're gonna turn touch AF on. I can't remember if this is how we sticky now. So we've got a bigger focus point, and it's just moving right along with with that. I can something jumps in front real quick. It locks on focus. I mean, it that snapped. That absolutely snapped right into focus. I move this out of the way. It snaps right back there. It hunts it hunt for just a second there. But I mean we're snapping right in. So this is you know, people want to talk about you've got to have a wide open, you know, an F18 to get these cameras to focus right. This is an F9. Um let me change the focus on this camera a little bit. So that lens right now is stopped down to F9. It's not it's focusing at F4. It's it's that lens is focusing at an F9. Um, I can roll it open and we'll roll our ISO back down. And I'm sure at F4, it's probably going to focus better than it did at F9. So I got it. I always want to move it closer than the minimum focusing distance is, but I mean, it's it's doing exactly what it's supposed to. And I know this is a pretty simple example. I'm just moving a lens back and forth on a table. Um, but if this is if you've been running DSLRs for video, I mean, this is ground. I mean, this is hugely, amazingly different. I just I've heard a lot of people talk about having focus difficulties with their Z series and their Z fives. Um, I wanted to show the focus points I've used. Again, these are these are what I've used over the last year of shooting weddings, um, both photography and videography. Um, I think the settings work pretty much the same, work in lots of different scenarios. Um, so uh, if you check out my full Z5 review, I go a little bit more into um, some real world examples of how the autofocus works. Uh, I thought it worked well for that video as a as a review to show some of the things I've done in the real world with it. So if you want to check out that video, I will link it down below or somewhere up above. I don't know. I'm not a big YouTube YouTube content creator, but I will have that video out there so that you can see some of the results that I've gotten with my Z5 camera. 
Um, so if you wanna see more of those results, check out that video. But I'm gonna leave it off here for this video, just kind of the settings and how I set up my Z5 to work with um, F4 G lenses. Um, I might change how I do things when I get some Z lenses, but um, you know, this is for the person that's gonna be using their, their older Nikon lenses that still work. I mean, I get fantastic results out of this lens. This is a 24 to 120 F4 G lens with the FTZ adapter. You get fantastic results out of it. This lens lives on this camera. Um, I use it all the time for, again, it's mostly event work for group photos, um, you know, for your, just your run and gun all day, all purpose lens. This is a fantastic setup for that. Um, and I've been very happy with the results. If you have any questions on how I've set mine up, if you want to see any other settings covered, um, any little tutorials like this for the Nikon Z5, my GH4, um, any of the other cameras of the year I talk about, for sure, let me know, leave a comment, um, ask questions. Um, you know, I'm here to help. I'm here to um, add what knowledge I've got into the YouTube review and content stratosphere. So thanks for checking out the video. Y'all have a great day.